Ladies and gentlemen, it is I, Tetcher, and I am doing a giveaway of 55 keys for the Heroes of the Storm beta in the EU region. If you want information on how to enter, click the link in the description below. ESL, go for heroes, and what number cup are we on? I think we're seven or eight. Eight. Eight we are eight. on. Lucky number eight. So, guys, welcome to the Cursed Hollow. Um, it's an interesting map. Um, we've been discussing this one, and actually we've been seeing this one pretty much every single tournament. People love playing on it. The basic objective is to capture tributes that are spawning randomly across the map. If you capture three of them, you will be able to curse your enemies. As you can see on the screen, cursed forts will not attack, and cursed minions are reduced to one hit point, so that makes for a very hard push. And for those who have just tuned in uh, and have never seen Heroes of Storm before, turrets also have ammunition. So eventually, if that runs out, uh, they will also stop shooting. So it's really important that you get a good push going. Yeah, but ammunition was slightly changed in the last patch due to, I think it returns a little bit quicker now. Sweet. All right, let me just get everything into correct position so we actually have a full uh, UI. There we go. The UI actually got itself a little bit of an update. I'm hoping that it works now. Why is yeah. it not working? Well, I, I'm having sound issues because my sound is actually coming out of the... No, that should, that should be right. Well, while you're setting up your UI, uh, have you put in the new one is the thing. I am pretty sure I did. We'll see. So for now, though, I will introduce the team. This is BX3 Electronic Sports Club. And starting in the top lane, we have Aha! Aha! Is on the, <laughs> is Aha! On the Zagara. We have Enti is on the Nazibo in the mid lane. We have Kenshin on the bright wing in the mid lane, Fub is on the Muradin, and in the bot lane, it is Blueberry on the Falstad. And for the Raptors, we have Tyrael being played by Maneldor. We have Snowy Shock, uh, correction, Snow Shock playing Vala, Nagoshi playing Lily, Predator playing Kerrigan, who actually well, kind of looks like one at the moment, and of <laughs> course, Noxie in the bot lane with Tassadar. Interesting choice to put Tassadar in the bottom lane, though. Uh, Tesla is pretty decent in the bot lane. He has some of the best wave clear, and the fact and their mid lane is purely meant for the party lane. Usually, the party lane is treated as the top or the bot or whatever your golem lane is. In this case, the three man lane in the in the mid is purely for tribute gatherings to make sure you have as many people as close to all tributes as possible. Yeah, let me actually zoom out a little bit so we have a better view of the match. Um, also, a few talents being picked up here. No bribe on Falstad here. It's been removed, hasn't it? Uh, has it? Oh, then I... Well, that that just shows how long I haven't played. <laughs> well, I'm, I don't know if it's been removed or not, but if not, the range on the hammer is uh, pretty decent. I'm pretty sure it's been removed, though. Someone in the chat is going to correct me and chastise me for not knowing either. But <laughs> right now we're seeing, if we have a quick look on your Control 2... You can have a quick look at the healing and see how it is working out. We are seeing that Brightwing is taking a huge lead in the healing right now due to due to her passive. Really helps her get an early lead in that little bar. But at the same time, that's I, I guess also a little bit um, courtesy of her passive. It will always be working if there's someone around who needs a little bit of healing. And given the fact that it also counts over healing, which you can't see, well then um, it might be a little bit wasted healing there from Kenjin, although wasted, a passive... Yeah, I was about to say, rocks. you can physically not waste Brightwing's heal, it just ticks over time. It will just keep happening. Right now, though, Brightwing is on one stack for her bribe, and there was another bribe in the game, I'm pretty sure. At least I thought I heard one, but apparently I'm wrong, uh, according to the sound effect. We are seeing the Brightwing, though, taking in Venom over the Protective Shield, much more aggressive strategy than we see from a lot of Brightwings these days. Yeah, on, on the other hand, if we're looking at the team coming out of uh, BX3, um, they, they have an aggressive team. They have the possibility to go aggressive. They don't really have their second warrior because they have Zagara, which actually is more of a pseudo-assassin. She right. does. She, fit, she Yeah, like you said, she is she's, definitely a pseudo assassin, but she will fill the role of a warrior pretty nicely, thanks to the huge CC and massive zoning potential that she does offer. And uh, first tribute has spawned. It is in the bot lane. And there is one quite interesting thing in the talents that I would like to draw attention to, and that is on Muradin. Muradin has taken a very interesting build of Infused Hammer 
which is mana regen rather than the bonus damage on hitting an enemy hero on his hammer and has taken Skullcracker, which means every third basic attack will stun. This means he really intends uh, to get lane. up in the face. Uh, he goes down so, so close. Um, yeah, I was ab about to say that they were fighting in the mid lane as the tribute was being taken by the BX3. Looks like the Raptors are very much more interested in already dealing a lot of damage to those middle towers and taking out a lot of that ammunition. Yep, they've also got themselves a bit of an XP lead due to killing off Muradin in that lane, meaning that they were basically free in the lane. And they're going to oh, get Ents as well. Very nice attack uh, kill there by Predator. Yeah, very well done. And now they should be able to actually continue pushing in. The tower's now running out of ammo. And with Nagaji there, there should be no stopping the team of the, of the Raptors. You're confusing me with Predator, but still, the uh, Raptors <laughs> are just going to be pushing, pushing, pushing. And oh, now they're Kenshin. onto Kenshin. Kenshin getting hooked. He's t taken down to about uh, 500 hit points, I guess. Yeah, he had the speed boost. He was able to get out of there pretty safely. Furb, on the other hand, has taken a more standard talent as his third one, taking the piercing bolt so he can get two stuns, and there oh, it goes Predator. onto Predator. The tower is not helping here. There is no ammo. We are seeing Fub just charging through. He's trying to get his auto attacks off to get that stun, but Predator throws down his stun and is able to back out. It's getting the constant healing from Lili, able to keep himself alive and grab his fountain to give himself a bit of that health back. So they contribute spawns. It is on the side of the, of the uh, BX3. Yeah, BX3 already moving into position, but their opponents, Raptors, they gave up the first tribute. They're looking not to give up the second one as well. Nagaji, and Pred uh, Nagaji Snowshock and Predator continuing to put a little bit of pressure here in that middle lane. Blueberry is now moving towards the tribute. Nicely done here by Ente, blocking the way, but a nice Sionic Storm there coming out of Tassadar straight onto, um, onto Blueberry, who continues to go for the tribute. And we'll be able to take that one away. So two tributes in the hands of BX3. But they're already losing two towers. So they're way behind in the experience lead. Which is going to cost them because they're about to hit level 10. Blueberry now jumping straight onto Predator. Predator is able to just walk away with the help of Nagaji. And level 10 in just a few seconds. Yeah, and this is a, this is a very interesting uh, playstyle difference we have here. We are seeing BX3 very much keen on focusing the objective, and because of that, they're actually falling a bit behind in terms of levels. Due to the fact that Raptors have managed to take down quite a few more buildings and been in lane a bit more consistently, which is uh, making it a bit of a different game. We're seeing two different styles, and it's getting the Raptors a bit of an XP lead. But the question is, how are they going to capitalize off this? They need to start grabbing some tributes to capitalize on this in the top lane. We are seeing Tassad uh, Tyrael, sorry, being dropped very low. He actually tried to hide in a bush on top of a creep tumor. In comes Predator to try and deal with this and try and get some counter damage done. But Kenshin is easily going to be able to back out. Aha, doing huge damage onto Predator here. But with Lili here, going to be able to heal up. Next tribute has spawned. And it's very nice uh, zoning there from Oh, Enter. Noxie in a lot of trouble. Dimensional shift has been used, so he's no escapes left. Will he go down? We'll be able to just walk away from this one. Now it's a five-man army against the five-man army. And uh, Tribute already being uh, taken here by Fub, but immediately gets interrupted. Noxie moves in. Oh, he's trapped there by a beautiful Nazebo. The hit Argon goes out, but he cannot really get onto Ante. Beautiful jet from there onto Kenjin. But Kenjin will be able to survive. Courtesy of the Emerald with a beautiful Devouring Mar hitting two of them. Now Snowshock is in a lot of trouble. Nagaji is going to go down. Predator, he's envenomed. He will go down as well. Now we're onto Mandeldor. There's a jump. One more hit. That should be able to stun him. Will he be able to escape? Right. No, he's he gone. well, he actually will escape. However, the curse goes to the to the blue team. BX3 will have this moment to go for that full push. And as you can see right now, no hit points left on those minions. They're going to get taken out, and that will allow them to get the first fort of the match. Yep, very much so. Doing a great job here. Managing to get that lead back in terms of XP that they did lose thanks to that laning. This is a problem with giving your opponent the objectives too early. And we also saw the problem with the composition here from the Raptors. They used all their potential stuns early. We did see Nazibo was able to back out. He was able to survive the fight from Tassadar, who himself had no CC. He was able to survive that, and then he was been pushed so oh, far back Nagaji. by Tassadar. He's, he's in a lot of trouble, fine. but he's, yeah, he's Lily. He's fine. But uh, he was able to zo he was able to get zoned so far out that he was able to ult in complete safety. And by the time he did ult, judgment oh, and raid event here. Had Noxie been coming used. in. I would love no, no. Sorry about that. I <laughs> sorry, <man. laughs> they, they're they're like we want to go in. We don't want to go in. We want <laughs> to go in. Please make up your mind. Yeah, but, yeah. Gastikers, right? We will see. We will see some skirmishes, but 
the composition of uh, Raptors is actually very good in terms of escape. I wouldn't be too surprised if we saw uh, Kerrigan use the jump to fr take the jump to friendly heroes talent. I'm not sure what level that's on. Might have already missed it. I don't really play Kerrigan that much. Really should though. I have a nice skin for her. I believe she's level. 13, I believe, for uh, well, Jump to Friends. We're about to friends. find out, because <laughs> she's about to hit level 13. We'll find out if she does take it. And if she does take it, then we know it's on that level. If not, then we will be forever in the dark, or at least till the game ends, and we can look at it in the shop. Right now, we are seeing Raptors finally starting on their boss. It has been spotted, though, by Zagara. Zagara, for example, could devouring more here, but instead, she's just gonna let, they're just going to let it leash. That roach is having a bit of a bit of a crisis. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like no, no, don't leave me here. <laughs> but, what uh, is the purpose of life? But yeah, they let uh, they let the golem reset rather than force a fight. Zagara's devouring more would have easily allowed her to take this over, and it's rewind on Kerrigan there. Yeah, def I know that rewind and the dump to allies is definitely not on the same level, so I'm pretty sure she just skipped it. Yeah, could be, but speaking of skipping here, uh, Fub, he's going to hop, skip, jump straight onto Noxie if he's... Um, actually, Noxie has to be a little bit careful. Noxie forced out of the way. Ra uh, Ravenous uh, Spirit has been used, actually stopped there by Predator, who's immediately using his Mels from immediately. The judgment coming in onto Kenshin. Kenshin's still alive. The shock and odd oh, doesn't quite hit because of the Devouring Maw. Predator immediately coming in, but he's going to go down. He's a little bit too low, and this is the moment that BX3 was waiting for. They're looking to turn it around here. Maneldor... Uh, trying to get out of there. Nice hammer there, locking up both of them. A jump forward to slow them down just a little bit more. But BX3 has to be a little bit careful here because they might just get out multi shotted by Vala. Yeah, Vala going for the multi shot build, which is very wise in this scenario. Multi shot, very much a build that looks really nice in the damage tab, is not the most damage you can build, but it's incredible for a composition where you realize you're not really going to be able to get that close to the enemy team. And this is a team that you don't want to get close to with the polymorphs, with the Muradin, and especially with Blueberry, who's going to be able to just burst you down like they're trying to do to Noxie here. Noxie having to pop his face ship to try and get out. We're also seeing Tyrael also having to back out. If he judgments in, he's probably going to 100% have to explode and try and do some damage. Zagara, nowhere near the actual fight here, is going to make her way down. But currently it is a 4 versus 5. Let's see what BX3 can make out of this until Zagara gets here. She is about to arrive. I mean, she's going to come and in from behind because she a really good devouring more here. Yeah, Blueberry is already forced backwards, but he does have his flight. Ahara immediately moving into position, has the devouring more. This might be the perfect position here. Actually, get there the was a jump get the Lili, Ahara, that nice the there, failed to Ahara. Ahara in a lot of trouble, but he will be able to actually deal so much damage to the enemy team. Maneldor, Predator are so dangerously low in the midst of all of this. Lily has gone down in Venom, might take down Predator yeah. here. That's the end of him. Now, Fub is going to try and chase down Noxie, but Noxie is too far away. But it doesn't matter. It was a two for one. They got the tribute even. And again, BX3 in a very, very good position. Yep, yeah, very well played by BX3 there. Oh, Noxie! Oh, he's oh. giving chase. He's trying to go. We're seeing Blueberry giving chase Hammer. to Noxie. Oh, dodges the shock and awe. Sorry, the Hinderland blast now. It's not even shock and awe anymore. Blueberry, going to go it home, doesn't have any mana left. He's just going to join his team in taking that golem. They will clear this up quite quickly. In our hearts, it will always be the shock and awe. I like That's Interland Blast. Interland Blast. Hinterland Blast. Yeah, right. it sounds cool. I, I don't sound know. Cool. I don't know. I don't know. So we are seeing both teams beginning to recover. It looks like that uh, we may see them go for their... We may see uh, Raptors go for their boss again, but the team of BX3 is actually on their way to this boss. They may be looking for a steal or at least for a cheeky kill because this is all that uh, Raptors can really do is take their mercenaries around this area. And Zagara can see this. Oh, the convenient tribute spawn. Now they have to come here. We're not going to see any boss attempts because of this, but we are going to see a team fight. Tassadar, nowhere near this because he's dealing with the boss. We're definitely going to have to see Raptors gift this up, but that won't stop them probably harassing from over the wall with Valor and Tyrael with his Elderwind's might. Speaking about harassment, if you look at the builds here, uh, we have the multi-shot build for Vala, which is normal, but if we're looking at Tyrael, the smite build, that's a new one. Uh, no, this is actually, that's actually quite standard. It's standard, okay. Yes, uh, it's, usually it's I saw the more tanky build, actually. It's, it's the most damage you can get out of it. I would have preferred, personally, to see him take a... Uh, oh, nice way, I was about to say oh Nagachi in a lot of trouble. He might be going down here. Blinding Winds have already he been tossed out. They're trying to chase him down, but it's... Yeah, you were talking, it's Lily. Not going to happen. Yeah, Lily with her her swift feet. What's that called? Fro fast feet, close enough. Uh, <laughs> able to get out when she is damaged. Not too much trouble. But yeah, 
the build for material, pretty standard. It's one of the most damaged. And the fact that he gets the displacement on his smite is fantastic for dealing with Nazibo in this case, who I have noticed has been using his ult, what I would say is a bit too early. Down comes to Varagmore, only hits Tyrael. He's going to be able to Eldwin's Smite out of here. There's the ult, this time using it in pretty decent time. But still gets interrupted by Tyrael, but was able to get decent damage and at least burst Tyrael down. So now it is a four versus five. Alts have been popped on both sides, though. It's only Archon, Maelstrom, and Emerald Wind left. Drywing having to back out. Emerald Wind will be used as a disengage here if we do see Raptors try and go in for a fight while they have an alt advantage. But they may not realize this. Avatar has expired on Muradin. And if they want to fight, they're going to have to fight in a very disadvantageous position here. Nice job by Nag Nagaji. Able to dodge that zombie ball and those banelings. Well, now though, Noxy is moving in. He's oh, going to be popping be into his Arkham form. Nice. <laughs> Emerald wins straight onto Ahara. Ahara just gets bursted down. They do lose the tribute, but it isn't really what they were looking for in this fight. They're looking for some kills. They're looking for some experience. But now they're spread up due to the corpse wall, and they have to be very careful. Their ults are about to run out. Predator ha doesn't have his ult. Noxy doesn't have his ult. And they're forced to fall back. So they did get that kill, but they lost the tribute war once again that's six tributes in a row for bxc uh, bx3 this is not looking good for the guys from the raptors yep uh, someone mentioned that hinterland blast sounds german there is actually a place called hinterland in german so uh, in germany so there you go uh, I, so <laughs> hinterland blast if you, if you like so uh, i think there's a place in uh, i think someone said there's a place in uh, in holland as well i'm not sure though uh, hinterland not maybe not i don't know not that i know I have to, I, I, someone might have mentioned it last time I cast, but uh, right now, both teams taking their easy camps, not much else to do. There is a golem on the map, and this will be the target for BX3. The question is, can Raptors get in to try and stop this, or are they going to just be kept busy dealing with these mercenaries, dealing with these minions? Right now, top lane, under a bit of pressure. Curse has ended though, so the fort will be able to deal with this, and they are still defending mid lane. They do have a small chance though to get up to that top lane and try and interrupt that golem if they're quick, but no, devouring more, acting as an amazing wall here, and that's going to allow them to get the tribute, but they're coming in for a fight anyway. Emerald win, great disengage here, pushing everyone back, and we are seeing the retreat. There is the Ravenous Spirit doing so much damage. It's going to take down Lily before the remainder of her duration runs off, and it's taking out everyone. Noxie being dropped low, and Venom has been popped on here but we're seeing Snowshock is having to back up here because it's going to be Brightwing taking him down. Tassadar, only one left. He is on the run. Brightwing realizing that's not a fight she can take, especially while he's in Ar Archon form. And Noxie backing out is going to stay alive, but that Ravenous Spirit was perfect. Everyone immediately aggroed onto Falstad and onto, onto Zagara, who did go down as well as Muradin, but they completely ignored the Nazibo in the bush above them, who just wiped them out. Yeah, but this, this is something you always have to keep in mind when fighting in these close quarters. If you're dealing with a with a um, Nazibo, he's going to be popping that Raven Spirit, you know that. And you should always be continuously keeping your ultimates up until you can actually get to that guy. Just keep and any of your CC up. Make yeah, exactly. sure at least someone on your team has the CC to interrupt it, because yeah, it's but, some but of the most damage in the game. If you can't get in range for the CC, it doesn't matter. They were in range. He was in the no, bush right above their heads. They just didn't move up there. They were tunnel visioned onto Falstad. That was just a bit of a misplay. Yeah. I, I, I would say say they couldn't quite get there because of the uh, because of the lay of the land, but still, uh, look at, the, look at I, BX3. I would disagree, but we will see. we will see. Right now, BX3 going for their boss. Going to be. I, I wish we had a replay function so we could actually look at it. We do have a replay function, but no, yep, they were. I mean, Nazibo was here. They were here. They had plenty of they had plenty of room to get to him. Oh wow! What, was, what are those pings? <laughs> there's there's several other well, there's pings for the mercenaries, and then there was Nazibo here and. The uh, enemy team Nasibu was there. Was here. Sorry? Nazibo was a little bit further up. He was definitely so in actually... the bush. They still had to run through all the ultimates of the enemy team. Oh yeah, but they were still they still aggroed onto them after those had gone down. Like I said, they didn't really have any CC to counter him anyway, so there wasn't much they could do because, like you said, they'd already used all their abilities. Now we're going to see another fight happening. Is the Devouring more up? Devouring more is up, but they're waiting for the opportunity. Emerald Wind has already been used as a bit of a disengage. The Jungle Thousand Cups is going down. Ravenous Spirit is doing huge damage. No one is even near him to interrupt him this time. Kerrigan is trying to dive through. He's going to give her life for this. And the ult ran out before she could even stun him out anyway. And down goes Tyrael. He will be joining 
what might be the rest of his team. Valor, though, is able to escape. She will get out fine. And now it is down to Lili and Tassadar to try and save this. There's no way Valor's going to head back in here. That would be suicide. Tribute, once again, goes over to BX3. Seven in a row for them now. Yeah, now they also have a, another Grave Golem on the enemy core. Core probably not going to take uh, be taken down through the shields unless BX3 immediately moves in as a five-man unit. They have two men down. They should be able to finish this on the spot. They now also have their secondary heroic abilities as they have hit level 20. Core down to 80%, 75%, 70%, 60 Looks like this is going to be a game over. Shield does go oh, down Falstad and that goes allows down. a kill onto Falstad. Emerald Wind coming out. Oh, to deal with even oh more my damage. god, they're all but actually dying. Turn around here by the guys from the Raptors. BX3 desperately trying to get the kill there. But look at <laughs> Entei. He couldn't quite the get core. there. The beautiful shield from Noxie. Well, now they have one safe. chance. And that is to rush down this mid lane. They have minions. They have mercenaries. They need to do something. 50 seconds on the timers. And we are seeing them just charge down this mid lane. This is their only chance of winning. Tassadar's wasting time taking this watchtower there's no way they're going to be able to survive if that happens again zagara try to clear the minion wave in comes valor gonna start doing that damage and we're seeing predator go on zagara. zagara goes down the lot all members are dead it is the full wipe and pr we are seeing raptors pushing through here they could go for the victory but they're gonna need to survive a uh, quite a few members of bx3 who are gonna come up we're gonna see faustin up in 10 seconds we're gonna see nazibo up in 20 and but they're on the core. They're, they're, they're on, on the, the core. core. It is Five now a race against uh, time. Falstad Can Falstad yeah, exactly. delay it? They're killing this very quickly. This could have been the biggest throw I have ever seen. There's the hit of that blast. Trying to do it some damage. Enough. It's not going to be enough. It's going to be game. Raptors just are just going to take just this out with of the, the counter. 20% left, 50% left, 10% left. It is nothing more than game. And oh my word. The biggest turnaround yet. Wow. Wow. The amazing what? counters out of raptors too much greed they were so close but it just wasn't enough to push into that core with a golem and everything else they got the core down to what was that 30 percent that was uh, 28 percent 28 percent and then they just was two tunnel vision they a couple of them were attacking the core a couple of them were attacking the enemy and they got caught in the rain of vengeance it, the best turnaround i have ever seen Wow. Wow. I, 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 wow. I, I, I'm pretty much speechless. I am also, also speechless. But also, also you have to give credits to the guys from the Raptors who, saw, who were like, okay, this is our chance. They have to make the decision yeah, and absolutely. go Absolutely. That is the decision you have to make. It's like, okay, 50 second cooldowns. We're going to be fighting at maximum two or three of them. We have five. We have to go now. That's the only decision. Very good decision by them. Fantastic play. And... BX3, amazing play throughout, commiserations to you, but Raptors with the great decision making and the great save at the end, a, des a deserved victory. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, we will be jumping into uh, the next game, that's going to be uh, Hotslocks Elite against the Raptors, and uh, if this game is anything uh, like the next, well, we're going to be in for an amazing night. I'm Declan Link, I'm here with Thatcher, and for now we're going into a quick break, enjoy the videos.